Hi, everybody. Welcome. Nice to see all of you. We thought we'd try something a little bit different. Um, I wanted to take you around the church a little bit since you haven't been in in several weeks and maybe just give you a bit of a, an update, show you how things have been. Okay, so, well, first of all, you know well your front entrance and the two beautiful signature lamps. They, these are probably, I, I would say that, um, well, maybe, yeah, these, these have to be about, uh, probably about 80 years old or more. And, uh, and how do I know that they're that old? Well, because they're made in Canada, I've noticed. Okay, so, and so the quality is excellent. And uh, I've been, I, I polish these about six or seven times a year. The bugs like to get in and so get all of that. Obviously haven't done it now, it's quite cold right now. So, but, so we'll be doing that soon. Here's the front doors. You see the sign that we've had telling people that the, the church unfortunately had to be closed until further notice and the no visitors. And also we mentioned that they could go in for short periods of time, limited time at the cathedral on Church Street. And when you, when you saw the taping for our masses, you may have noticed that the doors, which have been here again, I wouldn't know how long, uh, the, the church, remember, started in 1871. This, this part of the building, I guess, should have been built within 10 years of that. And um, these doors really could not be the originals, but they certainly have been here a long time. And it's an unusual size. So when they, when they were getting worn down, it wouldn't have been really easy to replace them. Okay, and I didn't want to go with just one door because it could be cumbersome. So, asked one of our parishioners, um, as a matter of fact, it's um, Gus Oosterveer, and he's been uh, working to, to refinish. He did a nice job sanding this down, a lot of sanding, okay? And then, of course, um, it will be stained and, uh, and varnished, and then the kick plates, new kick plates will be put on, as well as doing something about the problematic door stops that we, we had so much trouble with. You know, you'd try and keep it down and then it would fall off, etc. So let's see if we can get that ready for you by, by, the, time you, by the time you return. Okay, so would you, what, would you like to come in? Okay, now, thank you. I'm so glad that you did come in. Obviously dimmer in here because this is, this is our, our lovely vestibule and um, it just, this is, you know, that this tends to be where the lost and found items are. If you see anything there, ah, oh no, okay, no, this was not, this was not planned. Here. That's one of these really creepy, um, we do what we can. I keep coming in, vacuuming this and so on, because the, the black uh, bugs and so on are coming in. This one wasn't here this morning when I did it. I'll have to pick that up a little bit later. So just try and ignore that, okay, right now. But if you see anything that is belonging to you, pick, uh, please pick that up when you return. Yeah. A lot of, uh, because of our culture of materialism, a lot of stuff, tons of stuff, you, you, you've noticed this. So much stuff, we're drowning in it, and uh, all the stuff that gets left behind. And, and nobody um, would even uh, come in to claim it. It could be after a wedding, funeral, no claiming it, because we really don't miss all of this stuff that we have, you know? It's just too much. So, now, and you remember the, the beautiful directory here, of course, on both sides. So everything else is, is as it was. Why don't we, that bug is really bothering me, but there's no Kleenex around uh, that's handy. So uh, we'll st I'll get to it a little bit later. Okay, so let's move in a little bit more. We've been keeping the church nice and clean. And you may say, well, why would it get dirty? Well, dust falls, as you know. And uh, so keeping that clear, let's see. And been having, I've been coming in here for daily prayer, as you would expect and also the uh, daily private celebration of the Mass, which I'll, I'll describe just a little bit later, just in a few minutes. We're set up, of course, for the season of Easter. So we've got the Paschal candle here and the, uh, the holy water font there. We had blessed that water a couple of weeks ago. So we have had a cross here before, 
as you know, with usually a white and probably a yellow cloth over it. And uh, didn't, I don't know, it didn't seem to be moved to do that this time. So a little bit more simple. And you can see that the floral arrangement is more simple too, because, uh, you know, nobody has been in. So now this beautiful Paschal candle, this is called the uh, Messiah. That's so aptly named, of course, because the Messiah came among us. And he is also, as you know, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Okay? And you, uh, I don't know, for those who are observant, we always have it's the year here, because we're counting down the year of the Lord's return. In, uh, and that's shown on the Paschal candle. Also, these are, of course, these wax nails are here to, uh, these are to indicate the, uh, the five wounds of Christ on the cross. And this, this uh, candle, by the way, you may not have no, ever known this uh, because maybe you don't actually smell it. If you got near it, you'd smell the, the wax, you'd smell, it smells like honey because it's at least 60% beeswax. Needless to say, this candle is very expensive. Usually it's not far off of, I think, $500. I tried to get the bees down to less, but uh, they threatened a strike. And so just had to, um, just had to go with the asking price. Uh, but we do use it for two years, so that helps. Okay, and then the choir area, which hasn't seen any, hasn't had any action. I know you're looking forward to hearing our lovely choir once again, especially since it's been growing. Hmm. Now, oh, let me just, if we look at the altar here for a moment, the altar table, you may be curious as to, you may say, well, why did you say you were celebrating Mass? With whom? Well, that's the thing about Catholicism. We don't actually have to have anybody there besides the priest celebrating the Mass. Why? Because it's a, it's a holy sacrifice, and uh, the priest offers this up uh, as a, a, a sacrifice, an offering pleasing to God, because of course it's the, it's the Lord Jesus offered to the Heavenly Father, and it extends the salvific work of Christ through time and space. And so throughout the world, uh, the priests in the empty churches are tending to have the daily sacrifice of the Mass, the daily Eucharistic uh, celebration. Notice how this wouldn't be the case in non-Catholic churches, you wouldn't get a minister coming up, standing there and offering a sermon for 45 minutes to an empty church. But here, it's, it's different. This here is not a show or anything like that, but rather a um, sacred offering to the Lord. And so what I tend to do is I would uh, have the daily readings along with my liturgy of the hours, we call it, or breviary. That's what the priests and religious pray several times ideally several times per day, and it's the Psalms, along with some prayers and readings. Well, I would um, sit here in the front pew, and I would first of all have my holy hour, so hour of just silence of sitting in front of the Lord here in the, in the tabernacle, the Blessed Sacrament. It, that is, is recommended by any spiritual writer, uh, any spiritual um, expert that we've ever had within the church, to sp obviously to spend time with the Lord. If it's not done, then we don't have much, if anything, to offer to the people, because we need to be, we're another Christ. So just as the, Jesus spent uh, hours, and very often in the middle of the night, he would spend with the F Heavenly Father for his mission, well, so too we spend that time. And as part of that then, so I do the hour, and then I will have the daily readings. So the first reading, the psalm, and the gospel. So that, having, that being completed, all of that, I could then, after that, or at another time during the day, put my vestment on. And by the way, maybe, maybe people haven't, um, maybe you haven't really been in the sacristy. It's, it's a lovely place, but we would say that it's probably the world's smallest sacristy. Our own bishop had said that. He tried, he, he, he was fumbling and so on. Uh, we did the best we could. He got, was trying to get ready for confirmation. It wasn't a good idea in here. That's why we, we help him to put his vestments on in the rectory. 
And uh, because here, there, there were only two of us here, I was trying to move his briefcase and so on, and things were falling, and he said, oh, Father, wh wh why is this sacristy so small? And I said, well, Bishop, um, it's your church. They're all his properties, as you know. He's what they call the corporate soul, S-O-L-E. So uh, it's an unusual legal entity, uh, but everything is under the bishop's name. So I said, this is your sacristy. If you think it's too small, maybe do something about it, <laughs> okay? <laughs> okay, but the reason it's small, of course, is you know the renovations for those who've been here for more than 27 years, okay? And they did all of this. Otherwise, try and keep it neat and orderly. And then uh, I don't want to see, we've, we're watching the cameraman, don't want to get too close to him, but so I'm going to step out for a moment and let him pan through the vestments and uh, just see what we've, uh, where the vesting takes place and what is in there. Okay. Ah, oh, very good. So uh, there it is. And the, the vessels themselves are just in the cupboard, just to the right of the uh, camera. Okay, inside now, and if he doesn't mind opening that cupboard, actually on the right, just on the right hand side. Yeah, there you are. There are your chalices and uh, other, other uh, items that are needed in the holy sacrifice of the mass. And also, holy anointing and baptism, especially. Okay, now I'll switch this off uh, for the time being. I'll come back over here. Uh, okay. So what I would do is having my vestment on uh, uh, for the day's color, which would be white, of course, or gold at this time in the season of Easter. Then I would begin with the sign of the cross. And uh, remember, the communion of saints, uh, even though nobody, nobody is physically present here yet, there are, there are the souls of the, those in purgatory, uh, the, soul, any, the souls of the dead. Heaven is in a different dimension, as you know. They could be right in front of us. Well, we've been, some people have seen visions and they've seen that there are angels and the first Eucharistic prayer speaks about that, the angels taking this to the Lord's holy altar in heaven. It's a direct link to heaven. Uh, and it's, as, it's so much linked to the Jewish faith because of course the temple was that very sacred place where heaven just touched earth and wherein was the Holy of Holies, tablets uh, of Moses, and um, the, um, the, you know, the uh, sacred bread within that, uh, the Holy of Holies, and, um, the, and, and some, some other elements, actually, okay, within that. Now, uh, all behind a veil, as a matter of fact, okay, which only the high priest could go behind. And so then you'll get, you'll see, you've seen that before the 1960s, this area was seen, it should be still, the sanctuary, very sacred. And so the communion rail was there and the doors were closed at the, at the front of the, of the sanctuary. Nobody simply traipsed in or anything like that. Uh, it was a, a holy and sacred place. We don't have the sanctuary, the, um, the altar rail here, in this church, they do at the cathedral once again, but I've tried to condition people to, you know, uh, not just if, you're, if you need to come in, only those who need to come in, to uh, walk to the side here, to where the arm rail, the handrail is, and walk in, never walk unnecessarily in front of the high altar with the Blessed Sacrament, always behind, and ensure that uh, nothing uh, unnecessary is placed on the altar table, okay? And so we're not leaning against it, we're not doing anything like that. And it's a, this is the, the sanctuary, okay, where the sacrifice is offered. And only those who have a liturgical role or who should be standing here do. Uh, do. I know there's the odd person who says, oh, Father, I, wish to, I need to see you. Okay, and then they'll, they'll proceed to come up and they desire to have a conversation standing somewhere over here. And that's, we don't do that, please. Okay, so I gently tell them, you know, I mean, I'm not going to be, uh, the, Lord's, the Lord, I think, says sometimes, watch out for religious men. They can get pretty nasty. Yeah, okay, so for the sake of sanct 
the sanctity of this area, I'm going to invite people to observe these rules, but no, I'm not going to get pushy or rude or anything like that, of course, because the, this isn't pleasing to God, right? So I've got the vestment on. I begin with the sign of the cross, and because of the communion of saints, I say, the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And I'm assuming that they're saying, and with your spirit. I then take a moment to acknowledge my sins, and then I have the brief penitential rite, and then the opening prayer. Um, because the readings had been done already, I then simply pause for a few moments. I can bring some intercessory prayers before the Lord, if I haven't already done that over there. And then I simply uh, take the chalice and uh, with, the, uh, with the corporal, set all of that up as we would do, I've got the wine and the water here, the wash bowl, which is in the sacristy right now, okay? And um, I do all of, I have the liturgy of the Eucharist here. And then in the end, I can, I can almost see the angels here and the souls in purgatory who are just being, who are so grateful for this cleansing banquet. And so I'm, I tend to look down this way and, uh, and yet up. So I look and then I just say, Lord, I, we're offering you the body and blood of your son because we know that's the please, please, most pleasing offering we can give to the Father. And I just, a feeling of elation a lot of times. It's just like, um, this is, because this is so pleasing to God and uh, because this is offered for his people, the church and the world, um, it's extending his salvific action through time and space, okay? It's almost like Fulton Sheen at once or used to call it road shows throughout the world. And so we're, we're taking the Lord's sacrifice to the road. Most of us have never been to Calvary um, and we never will be, be there, but we are here and where the mass is, there, of course, is the sacrifice presented once again and uh, renewed, okay, and extended. So we have all of that. I then reverently receive the Eucharist under both species, purify the vessels, sit down and have a nice prayer, and there's no rush, and I don't have to wonder, oh, are the, is somebody getting antsy out there? Is this, you know, I could sit there for a long time, and then I get up and let us pray, have the closing prayer, and then the, um, again, the closing blessing for uh, all of the faithful, okay, the communion of saints. That's what, so if you're wondering about that, uh, that's what I and uh, virtually all of the priests would be doing. And we've been doing that, well, ever since ordination, and certainly as this, as this pandemic continues, and uh, praying for you, okay? So, there, there we are. That bug there, without the, I, now that I'm near a Kleenex, I really have to remove the bug. It's just really bothering me, if you don't mind. Okay. Oh, hi. Great. Okay, you made it in. Now, probably the first thing that you're noticing here, you know, I don't want to boast or anything like that. We have a lovely hall here, as you know. And... Uh, I took advantage of the fact that uh, there wasn't anybody here, and about three weeks ago, I got enough energy to uh, vacuum, uh, to double wash and rinse, and to then put two coats of industrial wax onto the floor. So that, see, it's ready for your return, and uh, it's, a very, it's a very strong wax, actually. It should, re it should uh, resist scuff marks uh, a little bit better than in the past and furthermore it's a shinier one than the, what the professional had used the last time we except they did what i couldn't they did that arduous task of stripping the floor and if you've ever done okay ladies at your house years ago and so on that's wicked eh? that is a one wicked job i didn't have to do that okay I just had to wash and uh, but because of the wax one thing i did have to learn because i have done it in the past with household wax like in a house uh, but this this particular industrial wax it dries so fast and it's so strong that um you have to you have to make sure that you don't 
leave it for even um, more than a few seconds. Otherwise, what will happen is you're going to get blotches here and there, and we, we don't want that, okay? So, the kitchen, which I believe um, Wilma and um, I believe Wilma Connie, possibly Lisa Fillingham, they came in and uh, once, once this pandemic was declared and the church was closed, they got it ready for that. They kind of, um, kind of cleared this out of anything that was going to go bad. And uh, wait, what's this? Oh gosh. Okay, now, here we are. Okay, so, and let's, why don't we make our way to the office, okay? Because we're going to get ready for that talk. this door here. Mm -hmm. You know it's it's circuitous, right? But I must say it sure is nice that it's all linked together. Great on those really stormy days outside. Now, of course, to get upstairs, we can go one of two ways. Could come through here. Let's see. This for those who haven't been in here, this is the laundry room. This is where we're getting uh, things things done, okay? The laundry and uh, sometimes for for the parish linens and so forth, okay? And then now. Uh, just before we get into the office, you, maybe you, if, for, if you were there that weekend, that Sunday, I made reference to the treadmill that I have to go on. I, I really do have to, otherwise uh, the back gets sore and it's about to go out. Uh, there's a, a variety of problems um, that it solves. And uh, so here it is, this large Nordic track treadmill. It gets a lot of use and it has uh, been very good to me. It has served me well. Oh, and you may be wondering about this. A few years ago, I simply bought... Now, the, this is the as a kind of a massage chair. I thought, oh, why not? It's the Kahuna massage chair in case you are having a back problem and so on. And um, it's fine. It's fairly good. And that I bought... See, some things we buy for the parish with parish funds. Other things we don't, and then we would take them with us. And so the treadmill would be something... I don't really, in a sense, want to take it with me because it's, it weighs almost 400 pounds. We'll have to see how we can do that. And then this chair as well, um, I, I own. I, otherwise, I don't own that, uh, too many other things. Now, anybody who has seen, who hasn't seen this kitchen in a while, okay. This here, this is when uh, there were more priests in the house. And um, uh, so the, the cook and housekeeper would be using this this particular place to cook and then as we move in here this was the dining room but the the, the previous office over there right at the door it just seemed rather cramped this this can be you know for those who've come in to have a talk or anything like that or marriage papers filled out it just seems to be more spacious and it is good it's very nice to have that window there also eh? Okay, um, and so, uh, let me see, I wonder, would you like to take another minute and just see, uh, see Teresa Wilson's office, okay. This is approximately where Teresa Wilson has been for um, nearly the last 40 years, I understand. Apparently she may have been Actually, sorry, she keeps telling me, she may have been on that side and then maybe moved here. Um, also, these, this would have been subdivided, it seems to me, and they took that division out. She, it's amazing. You know how when things get done, you can't always remember uh, how it was before. Yeah, well, she has uh, one of those memories where she can, she can just remember exactly how it was upstairs and how it is over here. So there she is. And uh, this window, very good. Okay, and this is of course where you're coming through and uh, maybe requesting a mass card or uh, checking on sacramental information or anything else, sometimes giving a donation. Okay, there's the front door right there. Okay, yeah, so there, lovely. 
Very good. Okay. Oh, hi, you're here. Great. Okay. Super. Now, we've got our coffee, so we're all set like that. We've got uh, the uh, computer, the screen ready. Okay. And then we're going to, well, we had, um, we have invited you, as you, as you have read in the uh, parish app, to, to um, be a guest, actually. And so, but we wanted to start early. So I simply, I picked uh, somebody, okay, already. And then we're just going to get uh, connected with that individual. How's that? Okay. Uh, hello, and Oh, hi, Anna. How are you? Good. How are you, Father Richard? How are you, keep, you. How are you keeping these days? Quite well, thank you. Overall, a um, few challenges here and there. Yourself? Uh, we're coping. I think we're coping well. You know, we have we have our moments of when is this going to end, and oh, you know, like yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, when am I going to get out of here? But you know, for the most part, we, we're doing well. We're doing okay. well. Okay, that sounds uh, well. And you know what? You're pretty resilient. You know. And um, I want to ask you this: uh, What kind have you? Can you state what kind of changes have taken place over these past few weeks at your house? Uh, like what? what oh, yeah. Yes. Um, you know, um, for the most part, life is not that different uh, in our place because uh, we were already homeschooling the boys. Okay, right, um, right. We have been doing school at home for the past um, seven or eight years. Wow. So um, we didn't have to make that adjustment. School for us has gone, has been going as usual. But there are some other big changes, you know, like um, we miss mass. Yeah. We miss um, we miss sports. Right. Um, and all the hockey, baseball uh, has been canceled. Um, we lack uh, entertainment at night. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, um, and the, the boys have been involved in a number of sports. Are they also in uh, soccer? No, they haven't taken up soccer. No, they play baseball in the summer, and we have okay. no idea where the, the baseball season is, uh, whether it's going to be on or off. Oh, um, wow. Thankfully, we have been fairly healthy. We had uh, Michael was uh, sick for the, at the beginning of the uh, lockdown. He was uh, quite sick. So um, we, we locked down quite seriously. Um, in fact, we got so used to being locked down that we had to figure out how to get groceries online uh, to the point that we have not been out there um, since for the past six weeks. We, we figure out how to get things delivered and how to pick up things from your car. So I haven't had to line up at stores, uh, but we have to accommodate for um, groceries okay. that get picked up by someone else. Okay, and uh, did you thought, uh, were, you, were you wondering if he had uh, COVID-19 when he was sick like that? Yeah, when he was actually, he had, he had all the symptoms. Mm. Uh, he had a high fever and, and, and weakness and bedridden for about 10 days. Uh, so we were quite worried. Um, and we had been to the U.S., so we, we, we met the criteria of being outside of Canada. So he went for a test and, and thankfully it came out negative uh, because what we were most worried about, not just himself, because we knew that, you know, he was fighting it, but the rest of us, you know, we didn't know. Yeah, we were going to get. Plus it was at the beginning of this whole thing, right? So, um, well, that, that's we right. There were, many, there were many questions that were left unanswered. And, uh, you know, even I was just, uh, I was reading about COVID-19, I think, uh, even, even this morning. And um, I don't think it was immediate, I don't think it was known at the beginning that it could be transmitted through the air because of droplets coming in from the um, respir respiratory system. Right. So um, we, we knew that you had to watch what you were touching and so on. But that it could it could be airborne for a sh just a very short time, and that's why they're recommending the or they're ordering, in fact, the social distancing, right? 
But right. you know, um, and of course, both of your boys, David and Michael, they're both altar servers. And uh, you typically, well, they, they can serve on um, Saturday evening or, or Sunday morning, but it's very often Saturday evening in case, so for, for our parishioners, they will recognize them more easily. And um, are the boys nearby? Can they actually stand behind you for a second so everybody can uh, see them? Or? They're actually they're actually outside, I think, right now. Oh, good. Oh, great. Well, you know what? It is a nice, comfortable day. It's in, yes. it's in, it's in, it's in the 50s, actually, and it's nice and sunny, so mm -hmm. healthy. healthy. Um, but, but one of the last times before we quit the church, before, before we were advised by the bishop that we couldn't continue, uh, it was really <laughs> humorous because I was about to shake Michael's hand, and he said, no, I, uh, I don't think I should. I think we should be having some distance. And I thought, oh, wow. And then when you told me he got sick, I was grateful for that. <laughs> you know, so. That's right. Yes, anyway. yes. You know, he, he, we had him so isolated that uh, we wouldn't let him come out of his room for a full week. Uh, so, you know, when, he, when we, we finally got the results of his tests that were negative, we said, okay, Michael, you can come out now. But he was like a caged bird. That's <laughs> cool. I, but isn't that classified as... <laughs> As cruel and unusual punishment? Or <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, we, we didn't know how contagious this, this thing was, so right. we made, I brought in a TV into his room, his computer, his, uh, his reading, his, and he was quite comfortable in there, and he, he was actually quite demanding every, every meal, you know? <laughs> oh, so uh, with a specific list of items, desired items for food That's and right. so on? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> So we had to, we had to scramble a little bit, but okay. you know, uh, for the most part, we we are keeping well. Um, looking forward to getting back to normal, but we we try to keep a routine here. Oh yeah, and the root routine is absolutely key, isn't it? Uh, because uh, if you decide, uh, there's something we're we're living in time. Once we're in eternity with the Lord, when we are in eternity, then of course we won't have any temporal concerns. But living here on earth, um, one may have, I would have thought in the, in the past, I would have thought this, even though now I'm in my fifties, and I, I would have thought um, actually not until fairly recently that, oh, well, it would be nice if, if we had all this free time, you could live as though there is no time. It doesn't work that way though, because um, the, the, just the day and night, it, things change actually. So it's not like you, you're not gonna be like sleeping in for lengthy periods of time. Uh, you're, not, you, you, you're better off keeping a routine, right? And uh, you can't say, oh, I think I'll pray at some point today. No, you'd have to actually pin it down because even if you don't have much else to do, uh, that time is gonna, is going to go by. There's a, there's a, these are the challenges in living in the temporal world, eh? Yeah, you know? I find that time, time does go by throughout the day, you know? Mm -hmm. so some days mm -hmm. slower than others, but uh, uh, I, I do keep up to a daily routine. And uh, as you well know, I used to go to um, uh, daily mass at mm -hmm. 8.30. So I try to keep up with that, with, with online mass um, almost every day. Yes. I find that uh, it gets me out of bed because uh, mm -hmm. otherwise you think about, well, I have the whole day. And so, you you know, I think um, uh, the mass in the morning gets me out. Then I try to do some, some exercise. Yeah, very, uh, very important. Yeah. And then the, the school routine starts. Uh, we start a little bit later now than we used to because we don't want to end too early. You know, there's really no hockey practice, no hockey game to get to. So we, we, we eat a little bit later these days. Um, okay. Well, that's interesting. That's interesting. And you tend to, when does it tend to end each, each day in the early in the afternoon or late in the morning? Um, uh, the school, well, mm -hmm. the school, actually the, the boys had just finished up. So we, we finish up more or less when the school, finishes, oh, okay. um, you know, under normal circumstances, you know? Okay, yeah, all yeah. right. Um, yeah, so it sounds like things are going fine there and that you've got a routine going, so you're, you're okay with, with all of that. 
Um, let me see, are the boys missing maybe some friends? Uh, would they have had m more more people over and this kind of a thing before, I guess? Eh? I, I know yeah, my, yeah. Own, my nieces are having a problem and they keep on pleading with my sister to, oh, can we have tents in the back in the backyard or whatever? And my sister said, well, no, that's still not, that type of thing still isn't permitted. Oh, we can put them, listen to this, these are teenagers. Oh, nobody needs to know because we'll, we'll have it in the back and nobody can see. Well, they don't exactly live out in the country um, and people could see, but not only that, what about civil, what, for them to be thinking, we need to have um, and try to promote some degree of civil obedience and also, of course, obedience to God, you know, like, which, because the two probably have some kind of a link. Notice how the kids, oh, as long as nobody sees us, it's fine. Well, no, it's, that's not a good thing for them to be, you know. So my sister right. said, no, absolutely not. No, yeah, you, can't. you know, I, I, miss, I miss my uh, parents. I don't get to visit my parents, and I, I miss my siblings. And, and the boys meet, miss their cousins, but we have managed to uh, um, keep in touch through this to, through this medium. You know, we have regular Zoom meetings, and uh, it, it, there's there's uh, there's a novelty to it, which is kind of nice. You you see everyone in their own environment, mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. what they're up to. So it, it is kind of nice to see. Uh, what's going on it does th take things to the next level remember even in the 1970s when they kept talking about v video telephone that uh, i don't even i don't think they would use the expression video but we thought that maybe they could put a picture with the telephone and it never seemed to happen and uh, now i almost don't like to speak on the telephone that much because i either will text or email or on occasion something like this you know a little because bit more efficient. It, yeah, oh, it's email and texting is uh, very efficient, and then this here, it, you feel like you're together. Actually, it's yeah, really, really yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah okay. And you know, I'm I'm um, I'm hoping that uh, um, other parents will discover the uh, benefits of homeschooling during this time. Oh, nice. um, because uh, you know, I when I when I first tried it out, I thought that. Um, that wasn't for me, but I thought I would give it a shot for a year. And, uh, you know, it really brought our family together, um, gave me good quality time with the boys when they were smaller. And uh, uh, we, we liked it so much that we thought, well, we'll do another year. Mm. And then another year. And then another year. So we've been taking it a year at a time for, for eight years. And... Um, now I'm very thankful that we went this route and uh, we don't know what's, what's in the future, right? We don't know whether the schools are going are gonna to open for the remainder of this year and right. even if they're going to be open for September. So um, one of the blessings of, of, of doing what we're doing is that we didn't have to uh, scramble like many of the other uh, kids did because we already had a program in place. That's right. Um, so well, you know, for uh, I, I, I would like to suggest to other parents that, uh, uh, given the uncertainties of the year ahead, uh, they might want to look into a Catholic homeschooling program for 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 the next year if if the schools are not open and and you know this is certainly a good alternative. And you use the Elizabeth Ann Seaton program, it seems to me, eh? Is yeah, that... we've been using that for, for a number of years. And uh, it's pretty laid out. And mm. a lot of the courses are already online. So, um, and if they're not online, they're, they have CDs where they explain the lessons. I mean, um, Seaton Homeschooling has been around for about 25 years. Mm -hmm. So they've, um, they've really come a long way. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Oh, wow. Well, and that... it's also um, it's also an accredited school, so you get transcripts with marks. Um, so the kids don't do it because I'm telling them to do it. They do it because they know they have to do it, or they don't get their credits, right? So it would it, it would definitely be good for so it would take a certain amount of discipline, which is which it's developing actually, right? 
yeah, and yeah. It, and it's and it's um it's very it, it would be obviously as well very individualized. So you don't have th you know this big that you know the big problem or the big concern uh, over the last contract negotiation with the teachers was the classrooms that were too large. And right. uh, in this case, no, you don't have to have that. You like talk about personalized, eh? Yeah, oh. we have a very small classroom. Okay, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> and if there are any questions, then there they can be asked at once. Oh yeah, well that's this is great. Well, listen, let me just see. Oh, okay, well, wow, where does the time go? We've already been talking for I think close to twenty minutes, but okay, um, yeah. sure was it sure was. I appreciate your uh, this time together, and um, thanks for expressing a little bit more about what you're doing at the Pillar household, and uh, with regard to homeschooling, in in well, particular. I, I will be interested interested to see what uh, what other people are doing from the parish you know oh, I am too we, we did get a number of people who put their name forward so we'll be working on that and yeah we'll have to see how they're both dealing with this time and uh, also maybe the topic of homeschooling will also come up with them or there's a variety of other topics eh uh, we'll Good. Just see. there Can was one one last thing yeah I want to say that uh, we we appreciate the uh, Sunday Mass oh, um, at Star of the Sea, and, and we gather around our family room to watch it. Um, but I will say that the homilies are getting a little long. <laughs> Why don't you fast forward it? <laughs> yeah, you know what? It must be because I, I'm not giving a homily on a weekday uh, because I, I'd be talking to myself. And um, maybe okay, I'll watch for that because <laughs> somehow I'm not able to get all of the speaking, the speech discharged properly. <laughs> but yeah, and maybe maybe if necessary, just fast forward. You know, I understand okay. that you put you have it on your big screen, and then you have two candles. That's right on either side of the screen. Okay, very nice, just like an altar. Oh, great. Okay, very creative. Well, thank you, Anna. Oh, and. Um, yeah, I'll watch. I'll definitely. I'll. Uh, I'll watch for that. We try and keep. I should try and keep it. Um, you know, ideally, mm, well, it should be ten to twelve minutes. Some people think it should be like two or three, but I don't know. I'm not a magician. I don't know how you're supposed to talk, say anything of any kind of value at all in two minutes. You know, I mean, sure, the Gettysburg Address was very short and pointed, um, but on the other hand, apparently President Lincoln had followed a speaker who talked for almost an hour and a half. So it was very much welcome. We, we, that's not the case eh, with most Sunday Masses. Everything <laughs> had been said. Yes, right. So listen, um, carry on. And please give my warmest regards to each. So Ralph and Michael and David. Very good. And um, we'll go, oh, super. And everyone's staying healthy, which is key. Good. Very nice seeing you, Father Richard. It's such a pleasure. And um, God bless you, eh? God bless you too. Okay, thanks, Anna. Take care, eh? Yeah, bye bye. Bye bye now. <laughs> okay.